We see ads like this every day. And it wasn't always the case. Ads weren't always like this, impactful gripping, trying to send a message to you. Like this, this you can clearly see that you should support animal rights by the World Foundation, the World Wildlife Foundation. What does this image tell you? The first picture you see is someone almost naked, well completely naked, and at the bottom it says, he thought your nudes were hot, the entire basketball team does too. Obviously this ad wants to address news and sex thing. That is why they use sex as a component in this ad. However, this has an adverse effect on us, if you come to think about it. Obviously, this specific campaign used both genders, but for the purpose of this lecture, I'm just going to show this specific one only, because it is in line with what has always been done since the 1800s. This ad is from 1871. It shows a naked lady, and you might not have heard of Paul, I haven't. It's a tobacco ad. This Ad is the most earliest use of sex in advertising. Why did they have to use a naked lady? Obviously, it grips our attention, and for advertising, that is crucial. If you don't pay attention to an ad, the message does not transmit, and your ad's wasted, that's it. So, one day, someone thought that you should put sex in ads, and that is where we are today. To a more modern example, Carl's Jr. was notorious for using women as sex objects to sell the burgers. However, they have recently changed since times have changed. However, years of such effects don't go away overnight. Are we affected by what we see in the media? George Gertner created a mass media theory called Cultivation Theory. Basically, what it says is that we are influenced by what we consume. Only when you're a mass media user, if you watch TV for 8 hours a day, you will come to think that what you see in the TV is what is in real life, and that affects your thoughts. However, Cultivation Theory doesn't just apply to heavy TV users. It applies to internet users and all forms of mass communication. So, if you consume content like me, and like most people do, how would you be influenced by sex in the media? We come to gender stereotypes and gender roles. What are those two things, and how does that relate to sexuality in the media? Stereotypes are opinions or sweeping statements we form about people. They are short-sighted attributes that doesn't necessarily reflect the true nature of people. Roles, on the other hand, are stuff that we associate to people in real life. What they should be, how they should act. It's like a motherly fi figure or a fatherly figure. That is a role they play in our lives. If you look at this image, you would associate women with sex, won't you? You won't necessarily as different people react to the same thing differently. However, this is the one such interpretation of the message in Boku no Hero Academia Season 3 Episode 2. You would link women as sex objects and Obviously, that is not okay. One definite effect, aside from gender stereotypes and gender roles, is arousal. People feel aroused when they see sex in the media. Well, duh, obviously they would. But what other effects can there be? To answer that question, we don't know. Multiple studies have shown that People might feel different things, but there is no consensus. 
Therefore, I've chosen not to show such effects on stream. And that is the end of the lecture. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate that you're watching this. I'll see you all in the next stream.